Hi there. Um, I have spent the last month and a half messing with code signing with SSL.com in a YubiKey USB key that I bought separately from another company. The big lesson in this is buy their YubiKey, spend the money so that they send you the whole package, you get it right, and their support department is not confused by what's been done. Um, that said, in my case, I bought the YubiKey from another company and I used SSL.com to buy the cert to put on there. That immediately led to confusion because there was no YubiKey purchased from them. They assumed I was going to be using the eSigner method. Well, I have found out that the eSigner method does not allow for both Windows and Apple to be code signed, code signed with this YubiKey device, which is why I did things as I did. Uh, but again, the lesson would have been to get the YubiKey from them, spend the extra hundred bucks, and uh, and get a better level of support, and lead to no confusion on their end. Now that said, I'm going to show you the process that I used to sign code with SSL.com, and here goes that process. All right, to start with, I went to yubico.com, or I might have got it on Amazon, but the bottom line is it was a YubiKey uh, FIPS 140-2. That was the requirement. And so I purchased uh, this particular model right here, this little tiny uh, USB-C model. I then went to SSL.com, and I purchased the EV code signing. Here we go. That's the one I purchased. And evidently that's $249 a year, which is quite reasonable. Now it does mention user signing enabled with eSigner, which again I don't need. Now here's where I could have bought the YubiKey FIPS token, which would have been my indicator that I wanted to uh, use that token. Now, why did that just go from, oh, because I've chosen a one-year deal. So it's only $249 a year if you get it for three years. So that's just misleading. That ought to have been enough right there for me to go in a different direction with a different company. Uh, $349 if you're just using it for one year. And additional $250 for the YubiKey. So you're at $600 bucks for that first year if you go that route. Which my recommendation is you do go that route if you're going to use SSL.com. Otherwise, it will lead to confusion. Okay, after signing up, uh, if you sign up for the EV version, it's the highest level of security that is offered through most all of the SSL uh, companies. And through that process, they verify things with you one-on-one. -on -one. They ver if you've got a corporation, they want your uh, some corporate paperwork. They want to know about your business license. They want to see your website. They want to see you. You uh, Dun and Bradstreet knows who you are. They want your address. Uh, they want your phone number. They will personally call you and verify information about you and your company. Um, that's all part of the process of giving you that higher level of accountability. That when people see you've got an EV code, they, uh, cert, and it's backed up by a known SSL um, provider like SSL.com and some others, then you get a thumbs up and they don't ask any questions. So that's why I wanted the EV level and that was the process that I went through. Now, as soon as they accepted me, they sent me this email, which should be a red flag if you get this. Uh, activate your one-year code signing and start immediately using with eSigner.com, eSigner certificate, eSigner.com. None of that is what I wanted. I needed the YubiKey version of this, and eSigner is a completely different thing. And that sent me down a popcorn trail that took forever to get through, a month and a half. Uh, so if you see that and you're using a YubiKey, get a hold of them, start the process over again, or better yet, just buy the YubiKey from them, and this will never happen. But that's what they'll, you'll get when they, con when they confirm you've passed whatever the verification process is. You'll get an email from them telling you it's time to start signing some code. All right, so I'm going to take some of these steps right off the wiki. Um, 
to start from a clean slate, in case you've already had some trials and fails, you're going to want to go into the cert manager and delete any SSL.com. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, everybody has a cert manager on their computer. And in the personal and certificates, you'll see the certificates that are currently in your Windows install. Uh, these SSL.com related ones, you see I've got one, two, three here. I believe that's all there is. Um, I would delete those if I was starting everything anew. I don't want to delete them now because ultimately you need them to be there if you want to sign code. Next thing you want to do is install the YubiKey mini driver. So you've got that card, you know, the USB device, but you really want to get this specific driver and install it through PowerShell as an administrator to get a, a different level of connectivity. And when you run that, you download it from here, excuse me, and then you run this command as administrator from uh, the, the PowerShell prompt, and you're going to get a con confirmation that looks like this. And so that's the first big step. After you've done that, you've got to install the YubiKey Manager from YubiKey's website, which is right here. Uh, I say it takes about two minutes to install, and it's going to come up looking like this. But as soon as you plug in your YubiKey, and uh, of note, you want to plug in your YubiKey to a native USB port. Don't use an extender. Uh, I've been told by the folks at SSL.com this has led to failures. You got to take these um, gray areas out of the loop. Plug it directly in, in this case, to a, a USB-C port. They also said if you're using, say, a laptop and you've got multiple USB monitors and you're getting failures, that the power that the USB monitors take from the USB system can be enough to fail this process completely and lead to many, many hours or days of frustration. So uh, remove those external monitors while you're working through this process, if they're powered by USB. All right, so once it's plugged in, it's going to be recognized. You'll see your particular USB here. Um, select Applications and PIV. I can't remember what PIV stands for. So I just looked it up, and it is Personal Identity Verification. And there's a big uh, URL on that here, big page on that. Okay. And having pressed that, uh, there is a guide here, but I will tell you the guide is full of, uh, of falsehoods and rabbit holes, so it has to be just looked at loosely. Um, but I have chosen that. I've gone here, and I have started with changing the Pin, configure the pin. Uh, enter in the pin that you plan on using, and then you've got to change the PUK number using the same process. Um, and then you have to um, generate a management key. And you choose an algorithm. Now it says 256 here. We ended up using the one higher than that. I can't remember if that was three, it was three something. I don't remember the actual number. Okay, moving on, um, we're going to click the certificates. We've done, we're done with pin management, and it's a very important you save that pin, that management key, that PU key in your password management area because you're going to need it many, many times through this process, especially if things go wrong. It's like uh, any encryption key in any product. You need to keep that one safe. All right, the next step is you're going to select the tab um, where it says authentication, and then you're going to choose generate. And this is my actual, just so you can see, uh, right here, if you choose configure certificates um, and generate, it would start the process over. Mine has already started, and it's already completed. Okay, then you're going to choose certificate signing request or CSR. Um, oh, and here, here is where I chose the algorithm uh, 384 uh, when it when it prompted me for such. Uh, so anytime this came up, I chose 384. In fact, I need to change that wiki. And it could actually be that 256 was the right number earlier, um, but I know that this one is in fact 384, so we'll correct that. And even though 256 has been adopted by NSA and NIST, 
384 is actually better. So there I've boldened that one so it overrides what the image might imply. Okay, we enter a subject name. Um, I've entered this, my own name. Um, that actually what it defaults to is the username, I think, of the computer itself. That's fine. Um, and it says, uh, and, and I had, can verify this name doesn't show up at anywhere on any search. So it doesn't really seem to matter. It's just a subject name. Um, and then it displays the following information within the application. I guess it does show up within the application, but not on the cert. Okay, and you finally click the uh, button next here, and it generates, and it shows you what it's generated. Uh, we'll then ask you, where do you want to store the CSR file? So you want to put the CSR file in the same place that you're going to put all critical files to this code signing process, wherever that may be. In my case, if we scroll down a bit, we see that right here under the code signing directory of Mesh Central, Nextcloud, and so on, that's where I wanted to store it. So you see j.lapore.csr, that's where I saved it. Uh, well, actually, here it is right here. Now, after you save, before it will let you save it, it asks for you to confirm with your management key. So uh, you're already, you're here at that point where you're having to refer back to your management key. You're having to refer back to your PIN. It wants to know that you are you before it lets you do any of that. All right, so now it's time to generate the attestation and intermediate certificates. Now, in previous efforts, I've gone here. After my last support session with uh, SSL, that's been modified. So I've just updated our wiki. Um, and we're going to CD to where, to location, your generated CRTs. Uh, are located. Well, actually, actually, we've only generated one so far, and that was the jlaporte.crt. So, but we're going to CD into that very same directory where that file was located because that's the file we're going to generate these new CRT files. There are going to be two files. One is an attestation CRT, and one is an intermediate CRT. So, from that directory, from within that directory you are going to type the following. And that's going to, uh, this is assuming, you know, ykman.exe is a file that is found in this directory. Uh, if for any reason it doesn't pick it up, you may have to um, reference this directory somewhere or put that directory in your uh, path, your Windows path. Uh, I did not have to install a path, it just worked. So it was already it appeared to be already in the path. Okay, so then that exports two new files to that directory, as you can see in this screenshot right here. There's JLaport intermediate, attestation, and then the original. So the next step is we've got to verify the attestation certificate with whoever our provider is, which in this case is SSL.com, and attach it to their order the order that you placed for the SSL cert. So what you want to do is open both of those certs in Notepad. In this case, I'm using Notepad++. Side by side, have them both open. The intermediate and the attestation, you don't need the one, the first one, j.lapore, whatever name you've used. Uh, it's not relevant, as I've said earlier. All right, and as it says here, we're going to navigate to the Orders tab and open the order we wish to associate the attestation certificate with. Here we are there. I'll click on orders. I've logged into SSL.com already. Um, in my case, this first one is the one I want to associate it with. The second one is their follow-up mistake and brain damage. Um, long story. We won't talk about that one right now. We'll go ahead and just open this. And you'll see right now, attestation manage. There's also a delete because I've already created it. But in your case, you're going to select manage. And you're going to have the two places to paste your attestation certificate and your intermediate certificate uh, just as they appeared in Notepad here. And that'll accomplish that goal. And when you're done, go ahead and submit that. Uh, once you've done that, you're going to get a green bar at the top that says it was successful. And that part's finished. All right, next thing you've got to do is download your YubiKey DER. Um, now, I'm not sure if there's a delay between 
the time you've uploaded the attestation and the time this DER is available to you or not. Uh, because I have I've got, received some information which indicates there's an approval process of the attestation um, and other cert that is required. So this download may not appear immediately. If it does, you may not want to download it immediately. I'm not sure if you need to give this uh, a day of rest. A little gray area in there, forgive me for that. Um, so you can take this with a grain of salt or just download it and go as soon as it becomes available. It would seem to make sense to me that's not going to be there until they've approved it. So if it's there, use it. And this is how that looks. Uh, once again, in your orders area, we're going to choose download. And right here you see for YubiKey installation, download. And uh, Bob's your uncle. That's all done. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, the file that I downloaded in my case was already named. It was CompuMatter uh, uh, space comma LLC dot DER. Don't know why there's a space in there. You wouldn't think they would do that, but that's the way it was. And, and I didn't want to alter it because I don't know if there were consequences to any of that. I downloaded it to the same directory as all the other cert files were located. All right, so now we've got to install the certificate, that DER file, within uh, the YubiKey management, uh, I guess within the device itself. So we're going to open up YubiKey Manager, we're going to figure, configure certificates, select the authentication tab, and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, and then we're going to click the import button that you see right there. We're going to navigate to the DER file that you downloaded, which I said mine was CompuMatter LLC. Uh, and once you click the download, Yet again, it's going to ask you to confirm with your management key. And then it's going to uh, populate this area on the left, which you see there, and in my actual environment right here. Now, according to the bottom of this page, um, to make sure digital signatures are trusted on all computers, you should install the root and intermediate certificates on your YubiKey for a complete chain of trust. And we use these specific instructions to do so, um, which includes where to download from SSL.com their root and intermediate certificates. They have their own that should appear on your computer or on your device. Uh, and again, for signing your EV code, uh, code certificate. Now, these are the root and intermediate, intermediate is what that should say. Uh, PEM file, so uh, the extension will be PEM. Okay, I'm not sure what this note is about in my wiki. Uh, I don't even have time to address that right now, but um, it does say that this is the section and these are the following two files, so maybe I already came back and addressed it. Um, this file and this file, and I've got links to them. We're going to download those two files, place them yet again in that same folder. We're then going to um, CD into the program files YubiKey Manager, and that, uh, and I'm using PowerShell as a default as administrator. You could use the command prompt, evidently, and use ykman. Oh yeah, don't forget to use the dot slash method if you're using the PowerShell. And again, it's going to ask you for the management key, and so I've typed the following: ykman pip certificates import space 82. So the 82 and the 83 have some significance um, and we're going to import those into your management key. The same thing on this here. Now I am not sure. I'm, I'm after the fact on some of this stuff. I've done it um, earlier and uh, this was a month ago that I did this. But I do have in the code signing directory a file called 83 and 82, uh, which was done on full one. So it may be that that's what these two uh, end up generating. And I'm not even sure where I use them, but that's the process. And uh, oh, oh, YK man, is, so maybe in that process, it's importing 
those very certificates into itself, even if it creates these other um, CRT files. I'm not even sure if that's how the CRT files got created. Again, too far back, but I wanted to touch on it because it's in the wiki. Okay, and that is the procedure we used. Installing intermediate certificates into your Windows, uh, and that should be intermediate. Okay, correction made. As suggested on this page and taken from the instructions on this page. So this just shows you what we did. You don't have to do these two things. I'm showing you how to do them down here. So download the certificate bundle, um, which is actually from cloudfront.net. I can see it in my status bar. You're downloading this zip file. You can click right on here to get it. Um, and I'll, actually, I'll just show you where that is. Uh, I'll copy the link address. I'll put it at the top here so you can see that's where we're going to get that. Uh, and we will unzip the bundle and we end up with a file that looks like that. Chain.crt underscore. You will see that actually right here on my own computer. And now we're going to install that certificate bundle. We double click on the CRT file, the chained CRT file, which is inside that last folder that you saw. So if we, if we double click on that, which was just created, there's the CRT file right there. You can see it's a certificate by the icon. So by double clicking on that, um, the following will appear. It will ask you if you wish to install the certificate. Um, and it shows you that it's an SSL.com EV code signing intermediate um, and you can see root certificate. So this is part of the process that's necessary. You click OK, uh, choose current user when prompted, click Next, uh, automatically select the certificate store, uh, that's fine, and um, complete the certificate import, finish import was successful is something that you will see at the end of that. Okay, so now we're moving on to the actual signing of the code in Windows. Okay, we're going to install a program called signtool.exe. Um, there's the URL right there. Select download the installer. Uh, it's going to take about 10 minutes to install all the software. Um, and signtool is just a small program within all that other stuff that you probably don't need, but that's the process. Um, and then you've got to apply the following registry edits. Um, open PowerShell and just copy and paste these commands. I forget what they do, and, uh, but they, weren't, they were not necessary. And this one is not uh, necessary for us because we're not using PFX files. Okay, move binaries to Windows. Well, all that means is whatever binaries you want to sign, in our case, we've got to move them from our Linux world over to Windows so we can sign it and then put them back in Linux where they're going to be downloaded from. Uh, so we're copying from our, our remote matter, Mesh Central, to our Windows computer where we get all the other code stuff. And now uh, you can see those files here, Mesh Central, Mesh Central Command, Mesh Central Command 64, and so on. So we've got to move there. And uh, we're going to go to a command prompt. Um, uh, not necessarily PowerShell prompt. Hmm. Okay, so there's a bit of a conflict here. This is a direction that I went in uh, at one point, but again, it was uh, there have been failures all over the place in this process. Uh, the last developer from SSL.com themselves took me through Power uh, Power Stool <laughs> PowerShell on this part of the process. So I would say the same to you. Um, you, you need to make sure that sign tool is in fact in your path or it won't work. So um, I imagine the same command works from PowerShell as it does from um, the command prompt. I'm going to test that right now. So I just copied it, set path, equal path, so on, and I just pasted the whole thing there. But you'll notice my blinking cursor is at the end of a long line of hidden text. I don't know why PowerShell does that, but it, but it does. It blanks a lot of stuff out. I'm just going to hit Enter. Um, and uh, I'm just not sure. Let me type in the word path. Um, 
So it may not work in PowerShell. That may that path may have to be done uh, in command prompt, or perhaps done differently in PowerShell. In any case, you'll figure that out one way or the other. Uh, and ultimately, now that sign tool is in the path, and now that you are located wherever your uh, code is that you want to sign is located, from from exactly that location, you will need to type sign tool. SHA-256, everything that you see here, letter for letter, character for character, you'll be using your company name and the file that you, in fact, want to sign. Don't forget the quotes. And you'll use sign tool each for, once you've got sign tool all figured out and it's working, you can sign a zillion pieces of code with it. Um, you don't have to buy the cert for, for the next code that, that, that you want to sign. It's one time buy, sign as many things as you want, the world knows who you are and you're trusted. Now, I want to cover a few problems in, uh, that we've had along the way. Um, we ran that sign tool code and immediately got select a smart card device. Not what I was expecting. That's a fail. And what we did, which I instructed you to do at the beginning of this, so you shouldn't have to do this, uh, unplug the YubiKey device, leave it unplugged, run cert manager, delete all SSL.com certs, Restart your computer, replug in the USB key, and um, and then run the repeat the run the sign tool, and then we got a successfully signed uh, cert. So we did run into that glitch along the way. All right, let's talk a little bit about verifying the certificate that you just created and know that it works. Uh, Microsoft has a page on verifying code certificates here. Uh, I've gone through that a little bit. It's important to note that this first one will actually end up in a failure in our particular situation. Um, and let's see, I think it says something about that. If it fails, it could be that the signature used a code signing certificate, which we did. Sign tool defaults to the window driver policy for verification. This has nothing to do with Windows drivers. So we need to use this command right here. And just to kind of give you an example of that, I've just typed that. I've gone to the directory of interest, and I've simply typed the command sign tool verify slash PA and the actual file. If I just went like this and didn't put the PA in there, the slash PA, it actually calls it a failure. It's not a failure. It's just using the, uh, the wrong type of verification process. The same thing, I think we've got this slash V, which gives us a nice long list of um, of how the certificate is stacked. And you know you can see this is an SSL root certificate. Um, and each one is built, each one of these is built upon the previous, previous cert is my understanding of things. And uh, you can see this, the, S, the hash in each one of these is in fact different. But at the end, it says it's uh, not trusted by the trust provider, but that's not true. So you can't really use that as a verification because it, it's assuming that it's a driver related thing. The process is different when you use the code signing certificate as we have. Now I have to start off with I'm no expert at some of this. This is, oh, well I guess I haven't started off with them far down the road now. Um, I'm not an expert at signing code. Uh, this whole process certainly made me more knowledgeable and more appreciative of what that process is. Um, and, I, and signing up for an EV code has, has really probably bumped up the volume. But I want to show you this. If I right click on one of these pieces of code that I have signed with this, you know, using these processes earlier, I'll have a tab that says digital signatures. And if I open that up, excuse me, details, um, and then I'll, I'll see our company name right there, as you will in your case. And the name of the signer, it shows me is SSL.com. And all that can still be there, even if it's failed in some way. Uh, right here, you shouldn't see any failures. It should say it's intended for, uh, came from a software publisher, protect software from alteration after publication, which is what, what we've done. Um, it gives how long it's valid for. And then what we want to take a look at is the certifi certification path. In 
any case that this has failed, this first one had a red X right there. If you've got a red X, you can be sure when you install this on somebody else's computer, you're going to get flagged as an untrusted publisher. These all have to be clear. And, uh, and the one time uh, that I recall, there's been a, f a few of these, one of the times that that was red, we had to come back in here to this. This was kind of an odd one. I'm talking to the support guy at SSL.com. He says, oh, um, and he gives the guy's name. So-and-so is working with a big client on some uh, cert-related code signing thing, and he's added another the wrong root something or other. I'm like, what the hell's that got to do with me, right? You're a big company. It's a big world. How does that filter into my machine? <laughs> so evidently, um, in real time, something that they were doing on their end affected probably the world's certs at that moment, I'm guessing. So he came in here. He right-clicked on that, and he deleted only that last one. And I wish I had it recorded. I don't. Um, of what he did next. He deleted that and then he was able to regenerate the sign tool code and everything worked normally. We ended up with a valid cert right down the line. I thought, well, that's very interesting. So I didn't, you know, the faulty root goes away when you delete that second uh, root. You see both of these have root or the only, in this case on the left side, the only root um, with the issue to. So I pulled that out. Anyway, we got our cert. But just to test this, after he was gone, I needed to know that this worked in the face of a reboot. So I shut down my server, uh, or my system rather, to nothing, rebooted it. When it popped back up, that root certificate certification line got popped back in there. Now, what I don't know is, is it the very same line, or is it something new? Uh, it was done in an automate, you know, it was done automatically. So I don't know the answer to that. Um, but I was able to sign the code the second time without any issues, verify the code, and actually test that code on another computer so I can say that it continues to work OK. So this has been a long video, and this is the short version. I think I've got a half hour in this process, uh, walking through the code signing process with you. Um, I've, I've created this for my future so that I don't have to repeat this process uh, in such a devastating way, because I, I kid you not, it's been a month and a half, and I am going to create uh, another video. I don't even know if I have the time. I'd like to create another video showing specifically the pitfalls and the brain damage. But what I am going to do, just to, so you have some appreciation for, for what I've gone through and to, to, to bring this all together, these are emails. Each one of these are emails from SSL.com to me. I probably get a few more to them. They started back on 3.8 when I first created the account, um, culminating in yesterday's success of at 4.28. So it was uh, one month and uh, 20 days, uh, it appears, roughly. And the actual, let's see, the approval from them yeah, came somewhere in around the 17th, it looks like, where they're telling, oh no, here we are, on the yeah, 17th, where they're telling me you're good to go, you're okay, start signing code. And that's where the brain damage really began. So it was a month and 10 days of total brain damage. You can see uh, support, 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 support. Now here's one, I'm going to bring this bottom panel up a little bit. Okay, so this particular one, um, use this guy to disable the e-signer subscription. So they didn't even bother disabling it from their end. They want me to use a guide after they screwed up, sign me up for an e-signer certificate. I went through, I'd already been through about a week's worth of brain damage trying to use that certificate to sign my code because with my YubiKey because I didn't know any better. Um, and then uh, after much effort, many emails, we finally got that deleted, moved on from there. I still couldn't sign the code. I get an email from somebody else at their company saying, um, you know, we've requested a new complimentary OVCS, which is a totally different certificate than the EV. 
uh, not what I want. Uh, another developer told me it's primarily for drivers. It certainly has nothing to do with what I'm doing, but yet, again, I didn't know any better. I'm trusting the source. You know, I own a computer store. When people come in here, they trust the source. They expect me to guide them to the solution. Um, this was very much the blind leading the blind. I, they just didn't care enough. Um, nobody picked up the phone and called me at this point. I couldn't get a human on the phone. Everything was done via email. Uh, a couple of, I take that back. I think there were a couple of exchanges with um, Christo. And, uh, but again, it, he, he didn't understand the solution and sent me down the wrong rabbit hole. So it wasn't uh, until I sent them a letter, and let's see, sent, uh, you can see here, I've, uh, I forget about the emails for a moment, this is on March 31st, I sent them, can't get code sign fails, on April 27th, I sent them a very long detailed message. In real time, as I was trying to sign code, couldn't get it done. Uh, in both cases, I got on chat with them. These videos take a long time to create. The constant chats and emails take a long time. It's why uh, it's taken so much out of my life. Uh, but the, the, the good news is that last video, Failure for Ongoing Inability to Sign My Code, I sent that to um, via chat to somebody. I explained the situation for the umpteenth time. Uh, a fellow by the name of Carlos. Carlos was his name. He was the first person, and it was after begging. It was after creating a video. If customers aren't doing this, they're not going to even get those results. Um, he recognized the seriousness and the time that it took, so thank you very much, Carlo or Carlos. I'm not sure which it is. I think he's in the Philippines. Um, he picked up the phone and called me, and he did the screen share that I requested. Uh, you see right here in this video, I need someone at that company to call me and walk me through their final solution via screen share. Even at that, he ran into problems that weren't immediately clear to him what the solution was. And I, I don't know how anybody gets EV uh, files signed with this company if their support person has to check with somebody else to figure out why something's not working when it should be working. Um, yeah, I can't even imagine. So ultimately, my suggestion has to be go with a different company that has hand-holding support uh, if you are not a total expert in this area. Uh, but thank thankfully, he called me. The code signing now works. Uh, the screen sharing was necessary. And, uh, and life is good, and now I can move on to the Apple side of the equation. How the hell do I code sign an Apple file? Well, that's what I signed up for. Anyway, uh, that's all I have. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that this very long video has enough content within it to where if somebody else is a novice in the code signing business, they're going down this road, they may have signed up with SSL.com, uh, they may have a YubiKey of their own, um, and, and they feel like the blind is leading the blind, or perhaps it's a different uh, digital cert company um, using a YubiKey, or, or a, different key comp a different piece of hardware. The themes are going to be similar and um, will hopefully be a, be a benefit to somebody in the future. Uh, at the very least, it's certainly going to be something that I keep for my future, so the next time I have to have something signed uh, digitally, I take a hard look at this video and then plot the best course. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.